I am joined today by um, David Watt, who is CEO of the I Group now. Hi, David. How are you? Yeah, I'm really well today. Really well. How are you? I'm very well. Yeah. Thanks for joining me. Um, we're here to talk about uh, an app that your company produces, Libre. Um, and this, this, this app is essentially a, a track and trace app, if I'm correct. It, it's, it's to help event organisers. And at the moment where sport is being played out behind closed doors, what we really want and what we really need is fans back in and we want to we want to bring fans back into a stadium environment safely um can you give me a little bit of uh, background as to your company and and also what the app is that you've developed so um ci ci group is um six different marketing agencies that all come together and form um, integrated communications and two of those particular agencies uh, within the group one called corporate innovations and one called ci DigiNet, during lockdown they kind of got together because they had um, great expertise in build uh, ci DigiNet, great expertise in building applications building apps building web platforms data platforms and corporate innovations 25 years um, delivering live experiences and big, big events. So 30,000 people at outdoor events, you know, people in stadiums at Wembley, at Twickenham, all the way across the UK and also across the world. So we combined those two agencies to come up with how we could actually get people back to live events. So that's when we came up with LIBA and LIBA and, and um, ironically is Latin for free. And we wanted people to be free to go back to events. Yeah. So can you explain a little bit about the app, uh, how it works and, and, and what the main features of it are? Well, to all intents and purposes, Libra is a platform and that platform um, has a app built into it, uh, which you can download from the App Store and Google Store. That app you need to download approximately 14 days before the event. And then you need to self-diagnose or put in your test results to actually say whether you're COVID free. And then during that process leading up to the event, we then know that that person that arrives has said that they've not had COVID or not been near anybody. And then at the event as well, we then link that into temperature testing. So then the app gives you a RAG status, red, amber, green. And also we've added into that that we can actually now do test kits at the event, which we can do within 15 minutes to change your status. So effectively, what you're going to get is a very, very similar experience that you would have walking through an airport. You're going to get a QR code that says whether you're red, amber, green, and whether that will let you through the gate to go into the event. And if you are red or amber, depending on those circumstances of that event, then we'll take you to one side and then give you some, you know, give you a quick medical once over to see whether it's COVID or whether it's actually just another symptom. So that's principally how the app actually works and how it gives you access to events. And then we, we then use it as a track and trace tool afterwards but I might need to explain that a little bit more in a minute yeah and in terms of the app who 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 um, do, do, do people who are attending the events how do they get access to the app do they, is the event organizer send it out to the, the attendee well the app is will be available in the app store but we will then send that to the attendee because that app needs to link to that particular event because you might go to more than one event and you might be exposed to LIBOR more than once or twice. However, depending on the event, is it a socially distanced event? Is it in a stadium? How many people? There might be different um, variations that we might need to have um, for that app for that particular event. And we will work with the event organizers each time we deploy the app. Yeah, okay. And, and over the last couple of weeks, we've, we've seen football return, we've seen a lot of live sport return, but it's all being played out behind closed doors. This is having a huge financial impact on not only the clubs and associations, but also the local businesses around those mm. important arenas. How, how vital is it that we get fans back into a stadium environment but safely? Well, I think there's, um, I think there's, yeah, there's, there's two or three essential parts of it. I was, I was recently talking to Eddie Jones, um, the England uh, rugby coach, and you can actually see that um, interview on um, our website, cigroup.co.uk. And Eddie obviously is a, is a high performance coach, and he realised, and he says in that interview, that performance is actually improved by 20 or 30% if you have a live audience actually supporting that crowd. Um, whether that be home or away, um, because obviously we know there are different advantages for that. 
but generally the performance of sport will increase by 20 or 30 percent and we're all obviously want to be in a you know we're all in a competitive world and we want to see people competing on a you know on a great um on a level playing field but obviously we want to go along and support our teams you know we're all very very tribal as um, individuals so that was um you know that that kind of um, was a, a big motivation and obviously then the financial impact if you think about all the people all the stadiums all the events you know across the country all of the people not not the footballers not the people that are actually performing on the pitch but what about the people that work in the background what about the groundsmen what about the the hospitality people yeah you know, what about the people that kind of like smile and let you through the ticket barrier you know, all those people's lives are being seriously affected and furlough is coming to an end quite soon and if we don't get back to live sporting events within hospitality and ticketing all those people are going to tremendously suffer yeah and the one thing about sport and, and football in particular is that the way the stadiums are designed they're designed to have people in, in large crowds creating an atmosphere and COVID has changed all that but so it's essential that we get these people back in but do it safely so how important is the app in terms of uh, bringing people back in safely and, and it's going to be a phased return as well so how, how vital is it that we're able to do that safely well i think i think safety is essential and what we've got to remember is that the um the events industry has been delivering safety in events for decades and um i kind of like reach out to the government a little bit and say why don't you actually why don't you actually reach out to this industry to advise you on how to deliver the event safely rather than actually creating a load of rules that actually stop us running events you know let's be honest you know we don't sit around and develop um, development political policies or talk about brexit so why are you doing that for the events industry it's not your areas of expertise so safety is paramount and obviously liber as an app is a great trace and track tool and we, we, can, we can deploy that app overnight into an app store so you can download it, put your data in there, and then obviously we can then let you come to the event safely. We can take your temperature, we can give you a proper test, and then obviously post that event, we can then still ask you questions and still ask you to say whether you've had COVID. And then obviously, no matter how many people are in that stadium, we can actually then directly contact all those people via email, via text, and advise them to self-isolate. Yeah, and, and that's going to be vital going forward. And obviously, um, in between uh, us setting up this interview and speaking now, guidance has changed again with, with in England that uh, groups of people, more, no more than six can, can mingle, etc., except for a sport uh, within a, an organised setting um, for sport. But how... How do you manage those those changes in in policy as well? Because obviously they, they move so quickly. Well, I think uh, the government needs to give a bit more clarity around its policy. I mean, you know, they've um, they, they seem to kind of like change on the sixpence and not really give um, the industry the right type of you know uh, warning. We there are hundreds of events that have now been organised across the UK with live audiences. You know, there's a big car event at Vista with 7,000 people going to it next weekend. Three and a half thousand people at Doncaster today, as we speak, are all going to an event. And what they're doing is they're saying, well, we're going back to six people on Monday. Well, that's all good and well, but how are they going to compensate all of those people that have bought a ticket, all the organisers that have booked a venue? You know, it's, it's a farce that they think they can just turn, turn the uh, events industry on and off. Um, but they need to have proper processes and proper procedures, and then they need to rely on the events industry to protect the people that go to events and not get everybody to just sit back in their garden and do nothing. We need to get the economy moving again. And the events industry, like football, uh, like any sport, like music, like any cultural event, is the backbone of our economy. Yeah. And one of the things, one of the issues around uh, getting people back into the stadium safely and, 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 and events safely uh, is, is privacy and data security. Obviously, track and trace is hugely important to, to getting the, the economy moving again. How, how do you mitigate the, the, the concerns that people have around data protection and data security and, 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 and what rules and regulations are there that you have to think about? 
Well, within um, within our group, we always ha we also have a um, a data analytics business called Pearl, and all of our data complies to uh, GDPR regulations, and we've th thought through our privacy policies very very clearly. But what we have to do is we have to I have to answer that this question in two ways. When it comes to your individual data being put into LIBOR, we will then hold that 14 days prior to the event and 14 days after. So we'll hold your data for approximately 30 days. And we will then delete your data automatically. So that is the, that's how um, your data will be treated as an individual. However, the event organizer also needs to have a view of that data. And they might have asked you to opt in to a marketing, um, you know, a marketing opt-in, as you might at any type of venue. Therefore, then they will then hold that data um, for those marketing purposes. But otherwise, it will be deleted. Yeah, but do you think there's a, there's still a high level of distrust around these uh, uh, apps and, and track and trace systems? I th I think that. Um, there, you know, there's the big five out there. You know, we talk about, you know, we talk about Google, we talk about Facebook, you know, we talk about Amazon. They're tracking us 24 hours a day, and we're worried about an organisation keeping our data for something like 30 days to then be able to use that data only in an instance where we will advise you that you may have you may have been near somebody that's got COVID, and surely you want your data to be kept for that reason so you can protect maybe your grandmother maybe your grandfather maybe your children if you don't want to give up your data to protect your loved ones then i think you've got to think about not coming to an event yeah and and, and in terms of the event organizers how do you work with event organizers to ensure the, the safety and, and uh, of, of people's data well again i'll go back to our um uh, our data analytics company um, which is a European uh, company based in Amsterdam. So it's got a really good wide view of um, all data um, privacy policies and also um, regulations um, <clears throat> you know, across the board. So we'll actually work with the event organizer to make sure that their privacy policies are up to date, to make sure that the way they're storing that data complies with the GDPR and basically give them a bit of data support and data governance. This is really, really important today that we, we protect people's data we protect people's identity and we make the event safe as well yeah and, and do you have any experience using the app with it with a with an event is there anything that you've, you've used it on yet lately well we're, we're about to um you know launch a socially distanced event at blenheim palace uh blenheim palace is running salon privé um and that's got about eight thousand people going to it in a socially distanced manner and obviously we're the technology partners now for salon privé to deliver LIBOR, you know, at that event in several weeks' time. So let's just hope that, um, you know, the government see sense and actually let events go ahead that have proper track and trace, that have proper reg regulations around data, that are properly socially distanced, and then also have been organised in a very professional manner. Yeah, and in terms of the app itself, are, are there... Are there features that you, you are learning as you're going through the, these processes? Are, are there things that you can develop to help uh, event organizers going forward? Well, I think what we can be able to do with the app and um, how we develop it will depend on the event itself. But what we can do is we can start to give event organizers um, the actual number of people that you can fit into a stadium, for example, or the number of the people that can come to an event you know, safely and socially distanced. So the app itself will obviously let people come and arrive safely, but then the data we derive from that, not the personal data, but the, 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 you know, the, the movement of people and the arrival of people and um, the times they arrive and how we need to queue and things of that nature. So we can use the data to help people you know, um, funnel into events safely and funnel out of events safely. And that's our main focus is about safety and about not letting large crowds congregate. So those are the learnings that I think we're going to focus in first to make sure that we make people's you know, safety first. Yeah. And for any event organisers out there, um, how can they find out more about the app and, and, and your company? Well, if you just go to wearelibor.com, um, you'll find all the information there about the app. And then you can, you can simply just get in touch with us uh, and then tell us a little bit about your event. You know, um, how, 
what's the size, what's the aspiration, and then we can then design a kind of, um, we can design, you know, um, the data privacy policies to help you. We can make sure that the, uh, you know, the app has some of your event information in, and also then we can make that available to your attendees because the app to attendees needs to be a free of charge service. But then the event organizers need to understand that they need maybe going to need to you know, work out the commercial kind of um, the commercials around how we um, you know we engage with the event itself. Yeah, excellent, David. Thank you for your time. Uh, I hope all goes well. I hope that the event you've got coming up goes well, and and we get crowds back where we need them to be. That's great. Well, look, I've really enjoyed chatting to you today, and I, you know, um, I do uh, wish you all the best of luck, and uh, hope the publication goes well. Excellent. Thank you.